Good morning, Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Reverend Veronica Vias, and I'm so grateful to be here today with you from Dallas, Texas. So grateful for Reverend Don's invitation, and I haven't been to your community in many years, but I look forward to the day I get to come back. So today's conversation is about prayer. It's our season for peace and nonviolence practice, but it's also a conversation of how we align our lives individually and how we support a world that works for everyone collectively. When two or more are gathered, expanding our capacity to love, downloaded as a way to share with you how when we connect from our hearts, there's literally scientific evidence from HeartMath Institute that literally demonstrates the power of collective prayer. But let's do the practice again today for Season for Peace and Nonviolence. Prayer from the heart can achieve what nothing else in the world can, Gandhi said. Begin and end the day with prayer for peace. Let peace begin with you. So what is prayer? How did you grow up understanding prayer? How do you utilize prayer in your life now? Now, I grew up Catholic, and I was steeped in my faith thanks to my mother. We prayed the rosary every single night. We did our prayers when we went to bed. I went to Catholic school, so I was in this constant atmosphere of prayer. But growing up, even though I was immersed in the energy field of love, of Christ's love, Mother Mary's love, there was still a lot of beseeching and begging to something external. If I was good, then this will happen. And almost like, you know, creating a case for like, I've been good, I deserve this. Now, our understanding of prayer is the shift in consciousness. We understand that we are the place and the space, the inlet and the outlet of the divine in our unique individualized incarnations. So prayer is the portal of possibilities that expresses in, through, and as us. Ernest Holmes says, if when one prays, his prayer is a recognition of spirit's omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence, and a realization of man's unity with spirit, then his prayer is a spiritual treatment. And prayer has stimulated countless millions of people to higher thoughts and noble deeds. So prayer is aligning in the truth of who we are. Prayer is understanding that strength, vitality, peace, joy, wisdom, understanding all of these qualities, love, is the way that God expresses as us. And when we align individually in our consciousness, we're not just coming on a day-to-day -day basis with a, uh, a list, like uh, almost like, you know, Amazon Prime. <laughs> Let me put my order in. Even though we are aligning our lives, it's not about the external conditions in prayer. It really is about aligning in consciousness. Well, greater life, greater love, whether that's in partnership, or love of what you're doing when you're expressing at work. Joy, the joy of your beingness, the strength and vitality of your life that allows you then to go out in the world and do and share your gifts in a way that is uniquely yours. And then yes, we pray for the things that are necessary for our life, but really prayer is an alignment of consciousness. It's this constant realization. I have friends from many traditions, but especially my friends from the Buddhist and Hindu traditions, they have their mala beads. They are constantly doing mantras. They are constantly aligning their consciousness in God, the divine, and their way of understanding. And what they're doing is they're aligning in those qualities of the divine to express out their life. So that's what we're doing individually. So yes, we'll have those moments when things are not in harmony the way that we want and we're seeking greater harmony. Our, our health and wholeness. We're aligning our consciousness. We're remembering the truth of who we are, or we're remembering the truth for other people. So that's aligning individually in prayer. And the day-to-day -day prayer of gratitude then is really seeding into the universal law, that aspect of God that simply receives our word, just seeding in gratitude for the good that is present and clearing our vision so that we can see with eyes that see only God. We can hear with eyes that hear only God. We can speak our truth of the wisdom of God. And it's a practice being spirit in this human realm. And so I wanna talk about the heart as the portal. So prayer is a portal, the inlet and outlet of God as our life, but our heart is considered that portal of our soul. Especially in Hinduism, it says it's a significant, uh, as both as a place where the soul rests and as a representative location of the abode of Brahman. God. It's the hub and center of life. And I find that fascinating because when we talk about the heart, sometimes people think I'm a little too Pollyannish, you know, a little too woo woo. All right. When I'm always talking about the intelligence of the heart, moving from our head to our heart, prayer is not from the head. 
Prayer is the feeling. It is the energy. It's the vitality of God that we're then expressing and radiating and transmitting. But the portal is the heart. Now, here's an interesting aspect of our human experience, right? Our conditional experience. HeartMath Institute is an organization that has studied the energy field of our heart, the intelligence of our heart. And I'm going to post some links, but it says it's talking about when we are in a state of what's called coherence, our heart literally aligns our brain. It says most of us have been taught in school that the heart is constantly responding to orders sent by the brain in the form of neural signals. However, it is not as commonly known that the heart actually sends more signals to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. Moreover, these heart signals have a significant effect on brain function, influencing emotional processing as well as higher cognitive faculties of attention. And they go on to share how heart coherence creates a positive state. It generates positive emotions. It generates a field of energy, of potentiality. And when we are in our heart, that's when the place of the possibility unfolds for our greater reality. So there's literally this energy field of our heart. So have you ever walked into a room and you felt so much love? I remember the first time that I entered Center for Spiritual Living Dallas. I was nervous. I was on the edge of healing from a long-term illness from my 30s. And I remember driving the long way because I still had the chronic fatigue syndrome. That's what I was experiencing. And I parked in the parking lot and these white pedals literally cascaded onto my car. And I nervously went in. I remember making that left and making the left into the sanctuary. And I sat on that back row, that far seat. And throughout the service, there was this palpable energy of love, unconditional love, unconditional acceptance. And I wept because I could feel it. I could feel that I belonged. I could feel the love that was present. And that's what led me to dive deep into these teachings and to dive deep into becoming a practitioner, a licensed practitioner, and then an ordained minister because I wanted to share these teachings with the world. That when we align in our consciousness and that understanding of the allness and wholeness and oneness of God and that our life is that life, and to allow ourselves to align in prayer for the greater good of my life, your life, and all of life. That's how we transform the world from the inside out. I'm often uh, accused of being a dreamer, being a dreamer. They're like, Veronica, peace is impossible. But if we say that all things are possible in God, all things are possible in God, then we have to understand that peace is possible when we're aligning in our heart. You know, Jesus said, when two more are gathered in my name, there I am. And the I am that I am that he's talking about is God, the divine reality. And so when two or more are gathered, the energy is amplified, amplified. Now think about this from the perspective of going to a football game. I love going to my nephew's football games and the energy that is being amplified when we're cheering on those kids to make a touchdown to win the game. But there's this positive energy of amplification. But think about a time during the game when... Uh, they're not winning or a lot of mistakes are happening. And suddenly it's like this down energy. And I remember sitting at a game once and everybody's like getting frustrated, annoyed. And I'm thinking, okay, um, we're up in the stands. <laughs> the boys are the ones that are playing. Don't you think we need to lift them? Because you could feel the energy literally shift from this high resonance, positive lifting to heavy, dense. Heavy and dense. And that also affects people. So we can either create a field of energy with our prayer and our connection that is positive, that amplifies the good, that aligns in emotions that are healing and uplifting and, and opens us to the possibilities, or we align in that dense energy of separation and fighting. And you see it on social media and people are working out their unhealed, unskilled ways, attacking each other. Well, HeartMath Institute, in studying the intelligence, that intelligent field of energy, but also the geomagnetic energy of Earth, literally has a project called the Global Coherence Initiative. Now, I'm going to read this to you, just so I have it accurately. But the Global Coherence Hypothesis says, one, human and animal health, cognitive functions, emotions, and behavior are affected by solar, geomagnetic, and Earth-related magnetic fields. Two, the Earth's magnetic field is a carrier of biological relevant information that connects all living systems. Three, every person affects the global information field. Let me read that again. Every person, you, me, we, 
affects the global information field. Four, collective human consciousness affects the global information field. Collective, when two or more are gathered. Therefore, large numbers of people creating heart-centered states of care, love, and compassion will generate a more coherent field, so that positive state that allows the possibilities and those positive emotions, coherent field environment that can benefit others and help offset the current planetary discord and incoherence. Let me read that one again. Collective human consciousness affects the global information field. Therefore, large numbers of people creating heart-centered states of care, love, and compassion will generate a more coherent field environment that can benefit others and help offset the current planetary discord and incoherence. And they say, we are suggesting in essence that this encoded information is communicated non-locally between people at a subconscious level, in effect, linking all living systems. So they're linking us in the physical reality. They're linking us in these geometric, geomagnetic fields that affect us, but we affect it. We, our individual consciousness and our global consciousness affects the field. So imagine if we are gathered collectively, embracing the capacity to love, embracing the positive emotions, creating opportunities to connect with each other and to lift each other in prayer. Our global vision is a world that works for everyone, not just new thought people, not just me, not just you, not just our family, not just our friends, everyone. So if my thoughts are affecting the global field and your thoughts are affecting the global field, so imagine, as Christ said, when two or more are gathered in love, in love, that amplification of love. And let me tell you, this isn't some wishy-washy, we're gonna sing around singing kumbaya all day long. I'm talking sometimes love has to be really strong. Love has to lift. Love has to say, that's not okay, but let's align in this. Love sees that which is unhealed and unskilled. You know, that call and that cry for healing and support and love comes in. In that amplification of energy and the open possibilities to amplify this on the planet, I truly believe, I truly believe that when we gather together, when we gather together, that we can transform the world from the inside out. Now the Schumann resonance field is that measurement of the energy and they see spikes in energy when there's global meditations. And I remember we did that in the spring at the beginning of the shelter in place. And the global spike was huge because they had this huge uh, Unify had an event. All these events were happening that were gathering in meditation and radiating love. And my thought was, well, why aren't we doing this every day? Like, why aren't we doing this every day? And there are people that do. They pick certain times, they invite people to come in collectively to play, to pray and to play. Let's play in spirit. So Ernest Holmes says, if our thought is as unsullied as the mind of God, if we are recognizing our oneness with God, we cannot pray for other than the goodwill of all men, all men, all women, all children, all beings everywhere. So prayer, the power of prayer, the individual consciousness, the global consciousness, the effect that we have on each other as we amplify it with prayer and then heart math brings us skill sets and tools that we can actually then align in that coherence. So I'm going to teach you one skill set, one simple skill set from HeartMath. I actually learned this from Rita Marie Johnson. Um, it was originally called Be Peace, and then she called it the connection practice. And it's a synergy of insight and empathy, wisdom and empathy. And so she takes the essence of HeartMath in the practices and the essence and the and the skill sets of nonviolent communication and created this synergy that is just powerful. And then I took some courses with HeartMath Institute that really took me deeper. But we're gonna do a heart breathing practice because if anything, you can do this simple practice no matter where you're at. And then when you're in that heart coherence, that's when we align in prayer. That's when we utilize consciousness. That's when we put into the law all that we truly seek to reveal for not only our lives, but all life. So let me teach you this practice. So essentially, you're gonna put your hand on your heart. Now, some people do their left hand, so do your left hand on your heart, because I wanna bring my attention to my heart. And we literally are going to breathe deeply, but into our heart, into our heart. 
And once we get into this deep rhythmic breathing into our heart, we're going to bring up a feeling of appreciation because that feeling of appreciation is that consciousness is that magnetic field that's more expansive. All right. Now for myself, I have to think about, um, I bring in my nieces and nephews, but I have to think about them when they're little. Because a feeling of appreciation, you want something that keeps you in alignment, keeps you in that coherence, that flow, that even flow. Your heart beats in rhythm. It's got the brain aligned. Your systems are in order. When I think about my nieces and nephews when they're little, I used to spin them around in the front yard and we played and we had so, so much fun. I mean, I just absolutely adore them. Being most favored aunt has been the greatest gift for my soul. Now, I love them dearly and I love them turning into adults, but the ones that are in college, if I think about them in college, I'm like, I wonder if they're being safe. I wonder if they're out partying too much. I wonder if they went to class. Then that's going to throw me out of coherence, which is like this almost like jagged, jagged energy. And I want to be in a place where I'm breathing and I'm feeling that smooth. If you, when you see the patterns that they show, when they measure the heart rate variability, you'll see these smooth patterns. So think of something that makes your heart smile that brings you into that feeling of appreciation, all right? So for me, it's my nieces and nephews. And so I'm gonna invite you to place your hand on your heart and close your eyes if you're comfortable and you're gonna breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth slowly. And we're gonna keep doing some deep breaths until I invite you into that feeling of appreciation. And that's the simplest practice that I'm gonna teach you because there's other techniques where you can you know, ask your heart for the wisdom, where you can connect in coherence with everybody else. So just take a moment, hand on heart, close your eyes, take a deep breath in. And as you breathe, diving deeper and deeper into your heart, just let's just do some deep heart breathing first and breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. Deep, deep, deep into the heart. Breathe out. Breathe in. And as you're breathing deep into your heart, now just bring into your awareness that feeling of appreciation. Whatever that is that makes your heart smile. And just notice how that makes you feel. Breathe in. Breathe out, heart breathing, heart feeling of appreciation. And now that we're in this coherence together, just think of one way, one way that you can be the peace in this world. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. And now imagine your heart like the sun. It's a radiating heart and you're gonna radiate this love and appreciation out into the world. And imagine just collectively, literally in communion with other people, bringing in this positive energy, bringing in this coherence, bringing in care and love and compassion. Breathe in. And breathe out. And just notice how you feel. That simple. So here's your invitation. Align individually in prayer. In consciousness, every day, align that you're the inlet and the outlet of God, that the portal of possibilities are yours by your consciousness. To choose your thoughts in a way that are in alignment with what you seek to experience in the world in your own life and then align collectively in prayer and lifting this planet, not focusing on what's wrong, but lifting this planet in love. And yes, we got to treat and move our feet. There are things we must do, things we must say in a positive way with conscious communication, actions that we must take that affect, you know, our brothers and sisters in a positive way, but let us collectively connect and amplify this energy and to know that prayer is about the possibilities and to open into that. So the affirmation is, I choose to bring in love everywhere I am for the greater good of all. So let's just take that into prayer, allow ourselves to be present and to move into 
this day that when two or more are gathered, we embrace the capacity for love and love transforms everything. So I just invite you to go within and as we breathe into this awareness of the indwelling presence that is God, as we are anchored in our heart, that radiating field of love, the wisdom, the light, the power and presence that is God, I know that my life is that life. And I know that every single person, all of life is God, that one omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent source that is the life expressing in through and as all of creation. And so I just speak my word in full gratitude for this participation, this conscious participation that we call prayer. That the prayer that I align in my own consciousness and the prayer that we align together is a prayer that uplifts everyone and the truth of who they are. The I am that I am that reveals itself as love. That the good, the greater good of all reveals itself in the power of us coming together in that higher consciousness and in that awareness that all things are possible in God. And so when two or more are gathered, we amplify that love, we embrace that love, our capacity for love expands. And so I know and affirm and declare that right here, right now, this love is present, this love is palpable, this love is radiating, this love is transmitting in a fear into the absolute knowingness of the allness of God, the presence of God, the light of God. And knowing that it is already so, I just give thanks. I give thanks for the willingness to align in that potency of prayer, which is the just the answer that is awakening us to who we are, these magnificent beings of light. So as I know that it is already so that I just say thank you. Thank you for the yes. Thank you for the amplification. Thank you for the power of prayer. Thank you for the universal aspect of God, the law that simply receives us and allows us where to be. And knowing that it is so, I let go. I let God and I let it be. And we collectively breathe in. And as we release this word, we say together, knowing that it's already so. And so it is. So it is. Thank you. Have a blessed day. I'll have those links for you for heart math. Align in prayer. Align in your good. Be the peace. Let's amplify this together. A world that works for everyone. You have a beautiful day.